researchers have come to a general consensus that the typical Western diet has played a leading role in the rapidly increasing incidence of both Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis in industrialized geographic regions of the world over the past 50 years. But what exactly about the Western diet may be to blame? While a heavy emphasis on inflammatory fats and meats have traditionally been considered the prime suspects, a growing number of research studies now suggest simple sugars as leading culprits. So what's the difference between natural sugar and added sugar, and why do we care? Naturally occurring sugars are those in fruit and milk, which are not added to the food. They're naturally found in those products. Added sugars are added to foods that don't normally have them. For example, think of syrups added to food or other types of sugar uh, added to a food or beverage. Most U.S. adults exceed recommended amounts for added sugars. For example, on average, adult Americans consume 77 grams of added sugars per day, which when you think about what that means on a yearly basis, it means 60 pounds of added sugars consumed per year. Notably, sugar-sweetened beverages such as soda, sports drinks, energy drinks, fruit drinks, and sweetened coffees and teas contribute to over 40% of daily intake of added sugars. Considering that the U.S. accounts for one-third to one-half of IBD cases worldwide, it's easy to see how the IBD sugar connection became a subject of inquiry. So what does the research say about sugar and IBD? Let's check out just a few research studies and what the bottom line was that the researchers discovered. So in a study published in 2016 in the Journal of Inflammatory Bowel Diseases, researchers found a positive association between a high sugar and soft drink diet and the risk of ulcerative colitis. That study was the largest of its kind involving over 350,000 people and it also determined that if there was a high consumption of sugar and soft drinks, but a low consumption of vegetable intake, that risk of UC became even higher. A study published in 2020 in the Journal of Science Translational Medicine found that added sugar in the diet can lead to IBD. So in this study, researchers were looking at three groups of mice, those with the healthy gut, a group genetically predisposed to developing colitis, and a group fed a compound to cause colitis. The mice were then further divided into groups based on sugar intake. So one subgroup received a simple sugar solution for one week in concentration similar to a soft drink. The other subgroups of mice had no added sugars in the diet. Long story short, after that week period, the mice on the added sugar diets developed colitis that was far more severe than the no sugar added groups. The gut microbiomes of all the mice who were fed sugar were significantly changed for the worse, with a notable increase in pathogenic or bad bacteria that degrade the layer of protective mucus that lines the gut, while quantities of those beneficial or good bacteria like lactobacillus decreased, effectively setting the stage for colitis. While sugar consumption has been linked to the development of IBD, a study published in 2022 in the Journal of Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics found that high consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages over a three-year period of time was strongly associated with poor clinical outcomes in people with IBD. So they looked at 1,100 people with IBD who drank more than seven sugary drinks per week over a three-year period of time, and they found that that group of people had higher rates of hospitalization, emergency room visits, lab abnormalities, and inflammation. And moreover, they decided to independently validate those results by looking at a different group of people with IBD followed for two years, and they, it yielded very similar results. In addition to the potential role of added sugars as a causative factor for IBD, during an IBD flare, it's recommended to decrease the amount of concentrated sweets in the diet. Foods such as juices, candy, and soda can pull water into the intestine, which may contribute to watery stools and diarrhea. What does this practically mean? 
the American Heart Association recommends limiting added sugars to no more than 6% of total calories consumed per day. So for most American women, that's no more than 24 grams or six teaspoons of sugar per day, or about 100 calories from sugar per day. For men, it's 36 grams or nine teaspoons of sugar per day, or about 150 calories from sugar per day. Considering that a single 12 ounce can of soda contains 39 grams or nearly 10 teaspoons of added sugar, it's easy to see just how quickly it's possible to exceed those recommendations. To figure out if a packaged food contains added sugars and how much it contains per serving, check the Nutrition Facts panel. There you'll see added sugars underneath the line for total sugars. There are four calories in one gram of sugar, so if a product has 10 grams of sugar per serving, that's 40 calories just from sugar alone, not including the other ingredients. Now, if a Nutrition Facts panel is not listed on a product, I recommend taking a look at the list of ingredients, as there are 61 names at least, different names for sugar listed on food labels. Besides those ending in O-S-E, O-S, such as maltose, sucrose, and dextrose, some other common names for sugar include high fructose corn syrup, molasses, cane sugar, raw sugar, syrup, maple, agave, brown sugar, honey, and fruit juice concentrates. So take home message. Because sugar has been linked to the higher incidence of IBD, greater hospitalizations and more symptoms with IBD, and can cause diarrhea in concentrated amounts, there's a case to be made for seeking out some simple swaps to reduce the amount of sugar in your eating plan in favor of alternatives naturally lower in sugar. Did you find this video helpful? If so, let me know by liking it and subscribing to this channel. Thanks!